My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcast, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. We're not afraid. Uh, can you kind of translate maybe in English what exactly what happened? So, ¿dónde estaba usted cuando pasó esto? Where were you when this happened? Cuando todo empezó. Estábamos en el departamento de ropa de mujer. Oh, estaban, oh, okay. estaba diciendo que cuando pues, pues, estaba pagando. No, no, ya íbamos a la caja. Íbamos pasando Iban a la... ahí y ya íbamos derecho a la caja. Cuando escuchamos los primeros balazos que pensamos que eran golpes en el techo, cuando ya nos íbamos arrimando a la caja vi cuando entraron ellos. Por la puerta de enfrente. Disparando. ¿Usted lo vio enfrente? ¿Cuánta sí. gente vio? ¿Cuántas personas? ¿Cuántas personas pienso que vio? Tres o cuatro personas, hombres. ¿Y usted se dijo, me dijo que se tiró, tiró al suelo? Piso, sí. ¿Y cuando se tiró al piso, qué pasó? En ese momento? ¿Qué vio? Volteé para donde iban ellos y yo los vi cuando iban corriendo todavía, para como si fueran así para donde están los refrigeradores. Sí. Por allá se fueron. Ella me levantó y nos fuimos por la puerta de atrás de emergencia. ¿De atrás? Sí. ¿Corriendo? Sí. Cuando vol volteé, antes de llegar a la puerta de emergencia, volteé y yo los vi cuando ya ellos ya venían también para donde nosotros íbamos. Wow. ¿Se corrieron de enfrente hasta atrás? Sí. ¿Y usted dijo que estaba un, dio cuatro, tres o cuatro con shorts? Sí. Dijo, cuando estaba en el suelo? ¿O los dio y después se tiró? Sí. Los vi primero y luego me tiré. Y ya después nomás, cuando volteé por el piso, los vi cuando iban corriendo. Todos iban se miraban los pies de ellos cuando iban todos, iban formados corriendo hacia donde están las hieleras. ¿Y no pensa que era el policía no, que vio? No, no era policía. No era policía. No. ¿Y su hijo dónde estaba cuando estaba pasando todo esto? Estábamos juntos. Los ¿Juntos? Dos, sí. You, where were you? That was my mom. You guys got on the floor? Yeah, I got it. After you heard gunshots, what it sounded like? After my mom saw the people and she said they're actually shooting. Can you speak a little louder? When my mom said that she Thank actually you. heard the shooting, that's when my mom, and she saw the three men running, that's when she told us to drop to the floor. And then you just started and heading we back. Just started heading to the emergency. So you heard multiple, sh you guys heard multiple shooters? Yes. Okay. Muchas gracias. I'm sorry you guys had to go through this. Thank you for telling us the story. Gracias. Here we go. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. This is an emergency broadcast. Uh, please pay attention. Uh, this is, was uh, a part of uh, an interview with a local witness that uh, was there in El Paso during the shooting at Walmart. Now, uh, they're happening. Another one just a few hours ago in Ohio. Uh, Things are really moving fast, and I tell you, there is always a pattern. Uh, remember, in uh, last week, we talked about briefly, there was a shooting in uh, California at the festival. Uh, out of the blue, was only one shooter. Witnesses, uh, somehow the first few minutes, they were able to witness more than one shooter, several shooters, and then out of the blue became one shooter. Same story with uh, El Paso. Uh, witnesses report several shooters, and then there is only one shooter. It fits, by the way, it's fitting very well the profile. You know, the white, uh, average, lone wolf, whatever you want to call him. Now we have just breaking news. This is Sunday, of course, uh, early in the morning. Uh, the show is being broadcast on K Talks in the afternoon, but the Sunday is this morning. And there is a breaking news, police, nine dead, 16 injured in Dayton, Ohio, mass, sh mass shooting. The shooter wore also body armor. Now, same story here. This is very, very suspicious at the least, at the least. So let's see what, what, what CNN, you know, the master of propaganda are saying, because these people, you know, they have an agenda, by the way. 
And still, even if it weren't true, even if it wasn't true, even if it was just truly some crazy people out of 300 million people that we have, there are some crazy people out here, trust me, like everywhere. I don't believe in collective sense of guilt. There is no way you're going to make me pay for somebody else's mistakes. This, this behavior doesn't even belong uh, when you're in kindergarten. Okay, little, little Tom uh, ate the candy, so nobody eats candies anymore. You know what? What is this screwy mentality, seriously? Okay? So anyway, beside that, let's watch one second, because this is happening right now in front of our eyes, and I truly believe that is part of what uh, they start to warming us up, what's coming the next elections. You heard about uh, all these different politicians in the Democratic panels. And by the way, also some Republicans, don't get me wrong. I mean, look at Trump, what he's been doing with the by de facto egregious edict, executive order, uh, banning, you know, without any type of due process, a, a part of a rifle, like, for example, uh, the bump fire stock. The people may say, oh, we don't need it, that's fine. I don't need it, I don't care. The point is, you cannot just do that. By the way, the president don't make laws, number one. I would also argue that what is done is unconstitutional because the Second Amendment doesn't say, oh, the bump fire stock is good or bad. You know, it's part of a rifle. With the same principle, they can ban also, of course, magazines or pistol grip. After all, you don't need a pistol grip. Why? Get a slingshot. Uh, but beside that, you know, the due process was wrong. There was no due process at all. I mean, if you want to, let's say, get something out of the hands of law-abiding people, you must compensate them according to our Bill of Rights. must be a compensation. And on top, you cannot do these things react uh, retroactively, you know. When we bought a bump fire stock, it was legal. So this is completely out of their mind. But more important, it's very part of the plan. Because now... All the different politicians, you know, like the Harris, whatever, Harris, the, the, the chick, you know, the, from California, the piece of trash that she said in the first 100 days in her office, if she becomes president, Congress doesn't pass very serious gun control legislation, uh, she will start to remove the license of all the gun dealers by, you know, executive order, of course. And also, she will start to go hard on uh, um, completely taking the guns off the people. And let's say, Sarah, Sarah Harris, whatever it's your name, good luck. Why don't you try? I wish you would be the first person knocking at the door, seriously. And I'm not telling you this in a, in a violent way because, you know, I don't even, I don't, I don't advocate violence. I'm just telling you, this is not about violence. This is about, it's my right. It's our right. And I speak for myself, of course, but I tell you something. You draw the line in the sand, that's for me the line in the sand. There are many other lines in the sand, by the way, don't get me wrong. But that specific line on the sand, you want to come and take the guns? Let's start it right now, right here. Simple as that. That's the bottom line. And uh, if somebody's breaking the law, by the way, it's you, bitch. Seriously. Uh, not us. You can have all the executive order, you know, pouring out of your ass. But guess what? Doesn't mean that because you have an executive order and you're usurping our chair, the chair of the president, it means that you're loyal, legal, and obeying the Constitution. You are the person infringing to the Constitution, infringing the Constitution, and we are here to restore it. And let's sort it out. That's all I say. Stop, stop talking. Let's sort it out. That any politicians out there who thinks can use this uh, agenda of mass shooting, I don't care if they're real, I don't care if they're false flag, and they think they can at that point use it to destroy our Bill of Rights, and especially our Second Amendment, I completely say, I speak for myself, of course, Gianluca Zanna, I'm not speaking for others, but I'm telling you, I know there are a lot of many more millions of natural-born American cities and many women in between would like to say, screw that, come and take it. And I was even born here. So, and I'm here. And I'm not even afraid to say it aloud. I will not comply. You want to come and take the guns? Well, it's war. Simple as that. Simple as that. I don't care about anything else. And I tell you why. I'm not a hero. I'm not trying to play Rambo. No, it's simple. The moment that you, I surrender my guns, you already have me. That point, I can just pack myself in a, in a you know, lunch meat bag. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I know what's coming after. I read history. I study history. So I tell you, if you want it, let's sort it out now. Sarah Harris or any type of Democrats or Republican politician who think now with the, can use these uh, mass shooting as excuse for gun confiscation or gun control. 
I'm not going to give you one inch. I'm not going to give you one magazine. I'm not going to give you one rifle. I'm not going to give you even a slingshot, not even a black powder. I'm not going to give you anything. So meanwhile, just because I'm enjoying my Zana coffee, let's uh, listen to this other piece of propaganda from, you know, who, CNN, you know. You tell me that that's news. Wow. Some people, some of the witnesses, people who were inside, who were out for just a fun night, here's what they had to say about what they saw. You guys were here for a girls' night. Tiffany, or Nikita, you have an interesting story. You saw a young woman that you spoke to in one of the clubs you were in, and then describe the next time you saw her. She was laying on the, on the concrete deck outside of the club that we was at. What did you guys say to each other? We told each other that we liked our, each other's outfits and we thought each other was cute. And, and Tiffany, you're here. You ran into your goddaughters out here and it was a good time, usually a good night out here. And then what happened when the chaos broke out? Um, people just started running. They started pushing us out the back door into the alley out the back because they didn't want us coming out the front because they didn't know where the shooter was or how many there was. Did you hear shots at all, or you just heard people running and people telling everyone to get out the way? We didn't hear shots when we were upstairs because of the music, but the people downstairs did hear the shots. You've seen them all running, like looking down how Newcomb's stairs are, looking down, you can see everything that's down there, and you just seen people running every way that they could. Describe this area. What is it like? How many bars are here, and what kind of crowd do you usually see here? Um, what, it's like eight, nine bars down here? Maybe something like that. I mean, there's all age groups down here. There might be a fight every now and then. Um, nothing ever like this. I mean, even if it is yeah. a fight, it's just a typical two people being drunk. One person bumps mm -hmm. into another person. Someone wants to say sorry. The other person feels like the other person needs to say sorry. It's never anything as serious as this. Mm -hmm. How did you know tonight was different? The screams the the cruisers the chaos being pu I've never been pushed out of Newcombs I've never been told to get out of Newcombs but the security guards in their selves were running around telling people to get out and just how everybody was acting you you knew that something was wrong and then when you and you came outside as soon as you hit the front street you seen the bodies and you knew that all right that was a uh, you know kind of you know, CNN is really useless in any way. Even the way they do reporting news, you know, they have just to g grab everything they can. That's the point. Nothing really important about what are the shooters, who is the shooter, but whatever, regardless. The point is, think about if any of these people that they were in the massacre, or at least they were shot, you know, they had a gun on them. No, you, you cannot shoot them all at the same time. That's the bottom line. I don't care how fast you are. You know, if you carry a gun, somebody's trying to shoot you, what do you do? You shoot back. Simple as that. Basic 101, human rights self-defense. Now, if you may take an off guard, that can happen, you may get shot. But maybe your butt in front of you, he has the chance to shoot him back. So the point is, sorry for people of Ohio, I wish more people carry. I wish now more than ever law-abiding people carry responsibly, carry guns, not gun guns, and train. To have a gun is not enough. You have to train. That's the most important thing also. Have the right combat mindset. Have already the scenarios clear in your mind. So you don't think. When things happen, you hear the first pop, the first bang. It's not going to say, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Yeah, take cover, number one, and get your gun out and assess. Look for the threat. That's what you got to do. Simple as that. And when you see it, blast it. What do you want to do? And be sure that you don't miss them or miss her or miss them. Be sure that you hit straight. You be sure that you don't over penetrate. Be sure that there is what is between and behind your target. That's what you got to do. Okay? Let's see how long this uh, mass shooting will stop. And let's see really when we have all these other somehow shooters that disappear mysteriously. Maybe once in a while we get lucky. We get a couple. Maybe we start to see really where they're coming from. A little kid runs in and talks about acting shooter sure in Walmart. But being the guy that's, uh, that works there, we're just like, he's a kid, so we didn't believe him. So I walk out the mall, go to Foot Locker. I hear, pop, pop. I got my life scared, so I pull my gun out. I just started hiding, and they, they closed the footlocker, and some uh, some people went there, they were so scared, they just lifted the cage, and they just dipped, so I ran with them, and I just tried to make my way to the, uh, to the parking lot, and I see a whole bunch of kids just running around, you know, without their parents and stuff, so I got my bag in my hand, I'm trying to pick them up one more, as many as I can, just run out, but they're so, like, you know, anxious, they're, like, jumping out of my hand, so 
ain't much I could do for the kids, so I just made my way out. And uh, when I got out, the, uh, I guess when the cops died, I was a shooter or something. So I had to like show him my clip and stuff, show him it was the full guy, I'm like, okay, he said I was fine. Go out, I called a friend, tell him to pick up my gun. And I'm here now, but uh, it's, it's all, it was just a whole bunch of kids up in there. I'm sorry, I'm shaking. But it was a whole bunch of kids, like, kids in there. And I just hope nothing happens to the kids here. They were, out, they were out their parents and stuff. I tried to pick up as many as I could and bring them out with me. But. Now, Glenn, obviously we've heard about stuff like this happening across the country. Um, you being in a situation where you're seeing it here in El Paso, like, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I'm in the military, so when I just, I get gush as I just think the pool. You know, take cover, save whoever I can. But I was just so worried about those kids, man, because ain't no telling. Because I, I heard it was more than one shooter. I heard it was four. And I'm just worried about those kids. I wasn't even really worried about I was trying to pick up the kids, man. I, I wasn't really worried about myself. So, you know, it just brings back flashbacks of, you know, you just, uh, I, don't, I just hope the kids are right. That's all I'm thinking about right now is the kids. I'm not even worried about myself right now. I'm just worried about those kids. And that was exactly why America is great, I tell you. Uh, this man represents what? The spirit of America. First of all, we are not here victims. We are not here subjects of any queen or kings. Uh, we are not here uh, disarms. If you want to, yeah, you can be disarmed. But guess what? You have the right. The right to keep and bear arms. Okay? Not just to defend our freedom against tyrants, but also to defend uh, our lives from scumbags. And this man, this black man, represents exactly the spirit. First of all, he had a gun, number one. And remember, slaves are never armed. He's not a slave. He's a free man. The fact that he can carry a weapon. Okay? That's the bottom line. That's very philosophical. But more important now is practical here. This man stood up. He heard the gunshots. Took over. And he started to assess the threat. And instead of just running out or running away, he guess what? He noticed these little kids. They were there. And he was worried about that. And he heard about there were multiple shooters. So my point is that if every American, man or woman, in between, I don't care if you're gay, transgender, I don't care. I don't really care. It's not my business. But I care that you have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to stand up against evil. You have the right to, to, to keep and bear arms if you want to. I mean, to defend yourself, you don't need a gun. You can get a two by four. That would do it. But trust me, somebody should hit you with a rifle. You better have a gun too. Much better, okay? So that's my point. That's my point. Uh, they're trying to now connect all the shooters. I mean, this is still on going on, but you will see. It will come all after Trump, Trump supporter, white wing, right wing, whatever you want to call him. The reality this is not about anything about uh, right wing. Uh, this is about evil against innocent people. This is about an agenda that is being perpetrated in front of our eyes. Okay? So they want to come now and start this sort of a civil war. They want to start to get this uh, gun confiscation going. And I, unfortunately, I hope I'm wrong. I hope President Trump uh, will be doing the right thing. That means no enact or push any type of gun control. Like, unfortunately, he did when he did the after the shooting in, uh, in Las Vegas, uh, banning by executive order that bump fire stock. That now opens the door, as I said immediately, to the Hell's Gate. Now that bump fire stock uh, executive order can be the president for other, for other presidents to completely ban anything they wish. Assault weapon included. By the way, they, we already do that. This is not an assault weapon. The real assault weapon, you have selective fire. Or any, any of these rifles that we have here in the shooting, they are semi-automatic rifles. But the point is they don't want us with anything more than probably a single shot, maybe a slingshot. What politicians, corrupted politicians want, or tyrants want, they want a complete disarmed population, period. They will start with the anything between. They will start with, the, you know, things like, oh, let's be reasonable. You don't need more than 10 rounds. Or let's be reasonable. You don't need more than 5 rounds. Or let's be reasonable. You don't need more than anything. That's it. That's it. You know, that's it. They will say, you don't need anything. Look in Australia. You don't need a bolt action rifle. Oh, you know what? Get a, get a, get a cross and a ball. Okay? That's the point. So, that's the reality. That's the reality. It's happening in front of our eyes. All I can say, this is time to, to stand up together, Americans. Don't be afraid. You know, yeah, we can be a little concerned. I agree with you. But the reality is, 
doesn't change anything. More you're afraid, more the wolf will smell your fear. At that point, remember, we all gonna die. That's a fact. You're gonna be dead one day. We all gonna be dead. Nobody's gonna live forever, okay? I don't care what you believe or religion. You're not gonna be here in this body forever. So meanwhile, since you know that you're gonna be dead anyway, live as a free human being. And how do you live free? I'm not trying to give you lessons, but this is what I learned for myself. Don't be afraid. Once you got you with fear, you will be enslaved. Simple as that. You will be afraid to even to speak up. Do you will be afraid to stand up. There is a moment that you will have to stand up. We will have to stand up. Like we did stand up, stood up together at the Bundys. Remember the standoff, they call it. I call it, you know, peaceful. Reminded to the government that we are not your bitches. That we will defend the rights of each other. That's what it was. And we were ready to take a bullet. That's the truth. I had rifles pointed at me. Uh, the day of the 14th, I guess, of April, a few years ago, in Mesquite, Nevada, with a standoff with the bandits. And I was there armed with my video camera. Think about it. Guess what? I, do, I didn't care. Shoot me. Go ahead. Make your move. Same story here. This time, though, if you come for my guns, I'm not going to have my camera. I'm going to have my rifle. And I'm not going to give it to you. Okay? Till I'm alive. Period. Fucked. All right, little break. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna. Do not go away. This is a show about love, guns, and freedom. And if you don't like it, I couldn't care less. Okay? Go to listen to CNN if you don't like it. Go. Get out of my face. If you vote for Obama, you know what? I hope you listen, so I'm going to irritate you even more. If you vote for McCain or any type of these neocons, I hope you listen, because I'm going to irritate you even more. Okay, I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, that's a fact, okay? But come back somehow. There are some exceptions to the Republican, though, let me be honest. Bye. Don't go away. He's a songwriter, a poet, a rifleman. I'm not afraid. And a constitutional activist. I'm not afraid. Italian by birth. I'm not afraid. American by choice. Jean-Luc Gazzana. I'm not afraid. And his new CD. Love, Guns, and Freedom. 16 powerful songs on one CD from the heart of a patriot. For download or to order the CD, go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. That's www.lovegunsfreedom.com. Lyrics for your mind, music for your heart. John Lucasana's new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. Here we go, we are back. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on KTOX 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. These are breaking news and, uh, you know, they're going to break more news, by the way. This is not the end. I'm sorry. I hope, I hope, I wish that uh, I'm wrong, but I truly believe that uh, what's happening right now, this mass shooting, they're not just, uh, you know, they're not just an accident. They're not just uh, some crazy guy out there uh, by doing the crazy stuff. No, they are coordinated efforts. They are used, they are instrumentalized to create this mass hysteria, this mass fear, to completely push the agenda of gun control. What happened in New Zealand, what happened in England, what happened in Australia, what happened all over the world now must happen also in America for the new world order to succeed to enslave humanity. Uh, fortunately for us, fortunately for us, unfortunately for the new world order, we have the Bill of Rights, Second Amendment. They tr they've been trying, politicians used by the globalists, destroy piece by piece what is left of our Bill of Rights and Constitution. But the Second Amendment is still strong, especially in some states like Arizona or other states. And the point is they need to find now a way, a very emotional way to destroy it. But the next elections are coming. This is my prevision, my forecast. I, I, I truly believe that uh, if we have any type of Democrat in control, they will go for the full-scale gun control. By executive order, it doesn't matter. They're going to be hardcore. And maybe that's good at this point. The reason why, because if, meanwhile, we've been cheap, uh, day by day, a little bit of our rights in a way that people say, okay, today is not a day, or today, or oh, that's just a bump fire stock, or oh, after all, it's Trump. Maybe I say, no, let's just come and get our guns and let's get rid of this. Let's make it happen. I don't want violence. I hate violence. At the same time, I don't want to be a slave, and I will not. I will not. 
surrender my guns. Remember, many people like me took an oath to defend this republic against enemies foreign and domestic. All I'm doing here, upholding my oath. There is no way I'm going to give up our Second Amendment. There is no way I'm going to give up um, the right to keep and bear arms. And more important, I'm going to expose and become defenseless when we know that we have a bunch of criminals running our government. That's not going to happen. We know already what's happening. Uh, part of this Trump, um, let's say, exposing with the Russian scandal, all this stuff, the levels of high corruption that we have in our government. Uh, our government right now, unfortunately, is being taken over by evil forces. We know that. We know that there is no more justice. We know that the uh, rule of justice just for us. It means uh, uh, just the slaves, the serfs, they're going to be thrown in jail. People like Hillary Clinton, people like Obama, anybody who commits crimes, doesn't matter. They get free pass. So we are under corruption. At the point when there is corruption, for sure, you know that law-abiding people, people that they are, you know, armed are the last line of defense against evil. That was the intent. That's the intent of the Second Amendment. It was never about hunting or sporting purposes. Screw that. No, there is no one of my rifles is for hunting. I mean, yeah, I can get down a bear if I want to. If I had to eat, I can take down a, a, anything. But the point, my rifles are to hunt tyrants, are to hunt, you know, evil. That's it. Simple as that. To defend my life and my freedom. That's it. Now, this show, unfortunately, I wanted to talk about other things, but this is so important. I need to completely finalize that, try to make it really understand what's happening, that this is not just a, a, a case of individual crazy people going out there. They may be also crazy, don't get me wrong, but I truly believe they've been used exactly for this agenda. There are a lot of things, though, they don't add up. I mean, I told you, I played before this uh, uh, Spanish lady uh, video clip, uh, you heard the audio, of course, so you listen to the show, to the radio, uh, of this lady that was a witness during the El Paso uh, shooting. And she saw with her own eyes, that's on video, four people, at least four people dressed in black doing the shooting. And now the blue that disappeared. I mean, I found this uh, little uh, um, clip from YouTube of a channel that I follow. Her name is Lori uh, Colley. And uh, I think she has a good uh, thing about El Paso that uh, she, we can share, okay? Sometimes, you know, I like to get other people talking. I think she has a very good way to put it out. Let's see if you can. Hello, patriots, listen. frank citizens, and truth seekers. Today is Saturday, August 3rd, 2019. Was there was a mass shooting in El Paso today, and I want to tell you that it looks like the media and the official narrative is doubling down against the QAnon movement, and there are going to be some interesting days ahead. So let's talk about the shooting. Saturday afternoon, shooting erupted at the Walmart in the Cielo Vista shopping mall in El Paso, Texas. Witnesses heard gunfire, then saw three armed men dressed in black running. Initially, El Paso police said there were multiple shooters. The story later changed to just one shooter, Patrick Crucius, 21, who's a Trump-supporting white nationalist who hates Hispanics. The alleged shooter lives in Allen, a suburb of Dallas, and he drove 10 hours to take his revenge in El Paso along the border with Mexico. It's being reported that 20 people died and dozens more were wounded. Glenn Oakley ran to help the victims. Oakley, pictured here, was at the Foot Locker store in the mall when he heard about the shooting. He ran into Walmart to help and tried to rescue children who were not near their parents. Oakley says he is former military, he had a gun, and was told there were four shooters. Again, these stories, the witnesses always say multiple shooters, just like in Parkland, but somehow um, it might start out that the police are reporting the truth, and then the official narrative comes, it's just one shooter. This happens over and over again. Let's go to Oakley's statements. Me bless your soul. This is what I call it a true patriot, an American who, you know, he didn't have any duty to go there and help. After all, he's just a regular guy, he's not a policeman or law enforcement, and he put his life at risk. And that's, I think, that's the spirit 
of America. That's why we need more law-abiding people carrying guns, trained and educated in safety and proficiency. And that's how we can solve this problem. I don't care if these shooters, they're real or not. Once they start to be shot back, you will see that this thing is going to stop very quick. Listen to this. is the man who was the shooter is a Democrat before the shooting, but he's a Republican afterwards. Yeah. The shooter's Twitter profile contains yeah. scant information, just a handful of followers and people he's following. A photo he supposedly posted is our president's name spelled with guns, although this seems to be more fake news. Crucius's profile was changed from an affiliation with the Democrat Party Saturday at 4.02 p.m. to the Republican Party and a follower of QAnon at 4.47. Look at this image here. The summary on the left was done at 4.02 p.m. or it was sc- the screenshot is at 4.02. Registered Democrat Party, ethnicity unknown, religious views are unknown. It's got some family members listed here. And then notice on the right, same day, 4.47 p.m., he's registered as Republican, ethnicity is Caucasian, religious views are listed as Christian, member of NRA, follower of Q, Anon. Wow. Not suspicious at all. No. From the Q post, we learn that these mass shooters always have therapists, which can be a cover for the CIA's brainwashing activities under the MK Ultra program. This was done on the Unabomber while he attended Harvard University. The MK Ultra program was supposedly banned in the 1970s, but there's really no way of knowing if it actually ended. It's interesting to note that a relative of the shooter who has the same last name runs an alternative therapy center in Dallas near Crucius's home. If the shooter was controlled, his handlers probably used his cell phone. The U.S. Senate exposed how our spy agencies are able to use frequencies to control target subjects through their cell phones. They are also able to take control over vehicles with electronic systems. A video shot of the president's motorcade in February 2018 shows a car coming out of the woods, headed straight for Mr. Trump's vehicle, but it missed. It was soon surrounded by police. Let's take a look at that video. Okay, now it's a video. There he is. There's the beast. Oh, now watch. Here comes the car oh out of the woods. Look, look at that. that car that just came out of the woods. Ah. Why would somebody that do that? That car right there just drove out of the woods. <laughs> Now look at this. I'm going to just scroll up ahead and you can see that this car is soon surrounded by police. Right there. Came right out of the woods. Why would somebody do that? He looks so confused. Let me read Q Post 772. It takes us to a document put out by the Senate Intelligence Committee on MKUltra. Q says, read very carefully. Unreleased, classified, highest. Ability to use frequencies, incoming signal, slash modify, slash code, slash program, over X period, designate, mobile phone to control target subject. Op conducted, slash originated outside of U.S., and then car control, and then a link to that video I just showed you. Statement by the driver, fairy tale, as the world turns, this is bigger than anyone can imagine. This week, an FBI memo linking the QAnon movement to right-wing extremism and terrorism was released from the Phoenix office. The mainstream media ran with stories about Q and Q followers, containing a few facts mixed with outright lies, creating more fake news. Now, here are some more odd details of the shooting. Two different shooters. The photo of the shooter below on the left is supposedly CCTV footage. Notice he's wearing cargo-style trousers. On the right, this man was captured by police. He doesn't look very dangerous to me for having shot 20 people and wounding dozens others. But notice he's not wearing 
cargo pants. Now, this could be a different person. I don't know, but this was out there today and just something for us to consider. Now let's talk about Google searches. Google searches show articles written in advance before the shooting took place about the shooting. Note these posts from the Atlanta Journal and Constitution and the New York Times. Both images are screenshots of Google searches captured right after the shooting, but note that the times given were 18 hours earlier and 10 hours earlier. So from the AJC.com, at least 15 dead, dozens injured in El Paso, Walmart mass shooting 18 hours ago. Multiple gunmen reported an active shooting at El Paso Shopping Mall or Shopping Center. Note the time, 10 hours ago. And it is the Cielo Vista Mall, so the same mall. Now, Antifa, the fascist anarchist group who calls themselves anti-fascists, plan to besiege El Paso in an attempt to raise awareness of alleged abuses at the border. The exercise, dubbed a Border Resistance Military Training Tour, was supposed to be a 10-day siege with El Paso being on the schedule for September 1st through September 10th. El Paso detention facilities for migrants are uh, consistently strained to the limit. And here are the posters that Antifa put out for, look at this one on the right in red, September 1st through 10th, El Paso, Texas, border resistance convergence, abolish ICE, shut it down. President Trump wants Antifa listed as a terror group and referred to them as an, quote, assortment of radical left whack jobs. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick agrees. He warned Antifa on Saturday, saying, Stay out of Texas. We don't need them coming in on September 1st. We didn't need them coming in before this happened. Beto O'Rourke is a 2020 presidential candidate from Texas, and he was interviewed about the shootings, and he smiled and laughed. I'm not kidding. I'm going to show you. While saying, I'm incredibly saddened. It's very hard to think about this. It makes one wonder if this is how he reacts to tragedy or if he is part of a grand charade. I'm incredibly saddened. and It's very hard to think about this. Um, uh, But I'll tell you... um, El Paso is the strongest. Did you see that? I just want to show you something, and we'll play it again. Beto O'Rourke gives emotional statement in response to El Paso shooting. This is from CBS News. I wonder if anybody actually watched this clip. Well, uh, I'm incredibly sad, and it's very hard to think about this. Um, yeah, it's so hard to think about it that it makes you laugh. <clears throat> yeah. A presidential candidate. All right, why this matters. Now the FBI and the media are lumping the patriotic Q movement in with such vile and wicked acts as this shooting in El Paso. This is just one in a string that began after the Las Vegas shooting. And that's when Q started posting. The narrative being peddled by the media and officials dovetails nicely with the latest hue and cry from the squad, you remember them, these are the freshman Democrat representatives, AOC, Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley, who perpetuate the myth that white supremacy is causing a domestic terror crisis in the U.S. And who's at the head of it? Of course, they're blaming President Trump. This seems to be not just another mass shooting, but another rallying point for the left to take away our Second Amendment and label Trump-supporting patriots and Q followers as dangerous people. And that's the bottom line. Um, well, I have to say, you know, this lady, she's really good. I like her. Lori Collins, she's on YouTube, find her. She put it all together. This is not just a mass shooting or two mass shootings. This is something, an effort to completely, and there is enough evidence right there that you can verify, and I invite you to verify. This is not something that happened by accident. By the way, the MK Ultra mind control, this has been going on since the 60s, 70s, so much that is declassified. They can control people. They become on demand like Manchurian candidates. They can make it become killers, and they forget everything. That can happen. 
But there are so many things already that, that make no sense. The news has been already published before. The fact that we have different witnesses watching you know, uh, multiple shooters and now they disappear. This is something that we should be paying very attention. By the end, regardless of what you think, even if there was not a mass shooting calculated by, let's say, any type of uh, you know, evil forces, if, if, even if this is not a false flag, we never should be responsible, never should feel guilty for somebody else's action. This collective sense of guilt, this collective sense of punishment, it's against all principles of freedom. What we should do now, probably, as a logic, we should get more law-abiding people armed with knowledge and weapons and guns and rifles and really start to say, now we are in charge of our own uh, life and freedom and in calamity. Because the point, you cannot walk around always with a policeman, okay? I wouldn't like that in any way. I don't want to live in a police state. But if every law-abiding person carrying a firearm, even one, one out of ten, like, for example, in Arizona, there is no excuse you know, you can, law-abiding person, over 21, you can carry concealed without even a permit. So that's what we can do to stop these, uh, these, uh, these perpetrators of evil, okay? That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And then, of course, we want to find the truth. We need to find the truth. Now, another important thing she said, unfortunately, what's coming down is that people who believe in uh, conspiracy theories, and I call them conspiracy facts, you know, it's your right, by the way, in this country, we have the right to free thinking, okay, and free analysis. And yes, a lot of things that we don't believe from the official version of the government and tell me you can believe whatever you want, but you know what? There are a lot of things that we don't believe, and I'm proud to say that I'm one of them. This is also the purpose of the show. Don't believe to anybody. Just believe to your brain and to analyze the facts, okay? You need to somehow always verify the facts. Don't believe any dogma. That's my point. Maybe you have some religious dogma. That's your business. But my point is, when it comes down to, to government versions, always be skeptical. Because we know how many times the government has been found lying and cheating and doing evil things. Not just any government. That's a fact. Okay? So we need to have the right to investigate. Now, if you are one of these people that call free thinker or analytical thinker, they call you a conspiracy theorist, and at that point you can be labeled as a terrorist. This is coming fresh last week from the FBI office in Phoenix. It is not far from here, by the way. And guess what? If that's what makes you a terrorist, I'm sorry, but not really. I don't care. I'm a terrorist too, I guess, because I'm a very free thinker. I don't believe anything unless I verify it. And I know very well that a lot of things stinks, a lot of things that are completely lie. You want to talk about one, 9-11? You want to talk about Building 7? You want to talk about the joke? There are three buildings falling and only two planes hit them, okay? We want to talk about evidence so much that there are videos and movies and, and books out there. There are more than 1,500 engineering, civil engineering, that uh, engineers, excuse me, they have a coalition to expose the fraud of 9-11, the government told us. We know the evidence. We know. They can tell you whatever you want, all the lies they want, how many times you want, but you know at the end the truth. We've been played. They will use this crisis against us. That's what they're doing. Now, a little bit of a break. I want to talk something a little different, how to prepare ourselves to fight evil. Because that's, at the end, it's a battle that belongs to every one of us. And we all can become part of it if we want to. Wherever you are, things can happen. So we be ready. Don't go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM. Are you ready to get lost in lust? Immerse yourself in a thunderstorm of emotions and passion. Order John Luca Zana's new book, Perfectly Crazy, 69 Erotic Visions and Love Poems with Forbidden Erotic Italian Phrases. Perfectly Crazy by John Luca Zana. Available all over the world at Amazon.com and www.zana.us. time get your arizona concealed carry permit now with arizona concealed carry permit by zanna enterprises llc become a more responsible and educated gun owner carry legally concealed in 35 states carry permitted in restaurants where alcohol is served learn where and how you can legally carry a firearm in arizona learn where you can use deadly force where can you display your gun or not for self-defense Learn how to deal with law enforcement while carrying a firearm. Learn how to be aware of your surroundings 
and how to avoid a confrontation. Buy your gun without waiting for a background check. Get your Arizona concealed carry permit now. Go to www.azccw.us. Go to www.azccw.us. Free for single mothers and people with disabilities. Okay, uh, if you heard that, that was uh, a video, with the audio of course, you can watch it, of uh, a local station, KTSM, airing a video of uh, purporting the capture of gunfire in El Paso. The audio is pretty clear, you can hear rifle shots. What do you think is weird in this uh, audio, since you know we cannot see the video, watch the video. What do you think is weird according to you? Think about it for a moment. The gunshots are very clear. Bang, 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 bang. He's shooting at something or somebody. I guess somebody, right? There was no one yell. If somebody's shooting at you, would you stay quiet or would you yell? Maybe in fear, desperation, maybe just fighting back. Don't you think it's weird? All these shots and there is no one yell. That's all I'm saying. I wasn't there, but I tell you, that's weird. That's weird. So that's my point I'm trying to make here. There is something that doesn't add up. There are many things that don't add up. That's a fact. That's a fact. So what we're going to do here, first of all, basic common sense. If you live in any states that guns are not allowed, that means only criminals can have guns, guess what? My humble opinion, get out of there. Simple as that. If you live in California, New York, New Jersey, any of these dumb, you know, seriously, these, 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 uh, these fascistic states, get the hell out of there. Make your life more, mi less miserable. Enjoy life. Come to other places where you still have basic rights. Okay? Number one. If you live in a state instead like Arizona, for example, that guns are part of our life, are a right, you don't even need a permit to carry concealed, exercise the right. Starting, first of all, from learning. Learn, you know, be proficient. Don't just buy a gun and flash it at your next party with your friends. No, really, learn, go to classes, go to safety. More important, go to now, real self-defense classes, how to use these firearms. That's a must. And carry the gun. Don't leave it at home. Don't just say, okay, today everything's fine, I'm going to be fine. No, you don't know when things going to happen. When you can carry the gun, carry always an extra two magazines. You never know who you're going to face. Maybe one long wolf or maybe multiple attackers dressed in black. You know, you got my gist. So be ready. Be ready for the worst. But practice. Carry the gun. You know, I, sometimes it breaks my heart. I know, I know people who have guns, especially, you know, ladies who have guns, their husband give them guns, and they leave the guns at home. Completely. Oh, we don't need it. Oh, I'm fine. Meanwhile, we have people around the world that would pray, they would pay, they would give everything to even have an illegal gun. Just because they want to defend themselves. They understand how it's important. So this is what I'm trying to say. One second, I need to sneeze my nose. Okay? Please, exercise your right whenever you can. When you can. Practice. More important, start to develop awareness. Because you may have all the guns on you you want. You may have 20 guns. If you don't see it coming, you're going to be taken off guard. So we need to develop level of awareness. And that's why I like to spend a few minutes. Uh, the most important thing is to be proactive. If I'm reactive, I'm already one split second too late. Don't get me wrong, you cannot be always uh, aware of everything every time. I wish, but it's difficult. Sometimes it's impossible. But we can do our best. We can improve. So now, from now on, every time you go in public, anyone you are in your home, don't think you're safe just because you lock that door. The door is about three seconds away to be kicked. So it's going to take pretty three seconds or less for somebody with enough power to kick and the little frame will fly. So you better have a plan even in your home. But when you're in public especially, now you got to have a kind of a different type of mindset. You need to start to think about that your world is not just in front of you. It is about 360 degrees. It's everywhere. 
you might start to think about that from now on, for example. You don't have just to let people come to you. You want to have a, some sort of a different distances that you can somehow interact with people. And nobody should get closer to you than what we call talking distance. That means they cannot reach you with their arms or hands. There is no way somebody's supposed to get that close. But more important now, we need to start to see that uh, we need to be aware of things before happen. So we call condition, colors of condition. We have a condition white that you're pretty much like a clueless zombie. You walk around and you have no clue what's going on. Terrible. That's probably most of the people out there. Then we have condition yellow. Yellow now in this condition, you are aware. You look around. You look at people. You're not freaking out. You're not completely, you know, or paranoid. But no, you pay attention. Why that man is wearing, um, you know, a sweater or maybe a trench coat in the middle of August in Kingman? It's 120 degrees. Must be a question. Maybe just somebody a little extravagant or maybe it's just something more. Why the person is carrying something that you don't identify in the purse? Uh, why the person is coming towards me? What, what type of business do we have? You need to be assured that you are aware of your surrounding. That's color of awareness, yellow. Then we have orange. Orange, we have a little problem. The car is following me, by the way. I notice it. There are two people. Guess what? I don't go straight home. I will turn right, right, and right. If they still follow me, guess what? We may have a problem. Meanwhile, I have a plan. The plan could be very simple, like, you know what? I'm going to get my gun out of my holster. I'm going to get my phone ready to call 911, and I'm going to go straight to the police station. Now we go in condition from orange. We go in condition red. Guess what? The car stops and blocks me. And guess now? I have to decide when I'm going to fight. And when I see that door opening and I see maybe a firearm presented at me, I'm not going to freeze. I decide I'm going to fight back. That's what I'll do. So it's very important, very important. And then when we go in condition black, at that point, it's fight. Your mind is already prepared. Your training, your mindset is already there. Your muscle memory, hopefully, is already there. All you have to do now is focus on the front side and keep shooting until the threat is down. These things don't happen by accident. You've got to train. You've got to prepare. That's why I invite you to Kingman Force on Force, located at 3001 Stockton Hill Road in Kingman, Arizona, where self-defense is a human right. We offer Krav Maga, empty hands, self-defense, edge weapons, uh, firearms. We offer the first lesson free. We offer also, you know, just the first lesson. Come, it's free. It's all about how to avoid that fight, how to develop awareness. Come and enjoy the class, free. The first class, you can't miss it. If you want to go online, check it out. Kingmanforsonforce.com www.kingmanforsonforce.com We live in Arizona. We live in America. We have this right. Let's use it. Okay? Meanwhile, I would like to talk more, but today that's the show. It's kind of we're not out of control. What's happening, it's serious. I really feel in the next few weeks we're going to have a very important changes uh, in our country. Things are going to be pushed by both parties. They're all working for the same globalists. President Trump already proven in the past that uh, with the mass shooting in Las Vegas, another very suspicious mass shooting, he did an executive order that was completely uh, devastating to our Second Amendment as a president. I expect more, unfortunately. I hope to be wrong. Uh, meanwhile, we prepare for the next elections. That's what they're trying to do. They will do it if we don't stop it. Meanwhile, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give an inch. Don't be afraid. The only way they can enslave you is if you're fearful. If you're afraid... You will be enslaved. Think about it. What you want to be afraid of? We're all going to die. One day you all be dead. We all be dead. The only difference we can live with dignity and freedom or we can live like sheep in cowardice. I say live and stand up like a free human being. And that's the only way they will have no control over us. When they understand we are fearless, that we don't care, they can put all the laws they want. They're going to face it. They're going to face the reckoning. That's going to come down to that, unfortunately. But hey, if they want to, guess what? We have to fight. We have to fight for us, for our freedom, and more important, for people who are coming after us, for our next generation depending on us. I don't like to you, recourse to violence, but I tell you, I'm not submitting myself to uh, violence either. That's the bottom line. And I have enough to defend this republic against all enemies, foreign and domestic. All right, if you want to support the show, I appreciate it. Go to K Talks, you know, uh, support K Talks if you live in the tri state area. It's a great station. Let me talk about everything I want. Also, please, if you want to support me as an independent producer, this is my show after all, Love, Guns, and Freedom, go to www.zanna.us. I already tell you, Amazon already blackmail me. I mean, blackmail me, blacklist me. 
uh, tries to suppress my songs. You can find them on Amazon, Gianluca Zanna. There is also my erotic poems book and other books you can find. Uh, Zanna.us. You can support me just even download a song, 99 cents, from anywhere around the world. I appreciate your help. And I really say we need to stand together, regardless where you are, wherever you are around the world, if you believe in freedom, if you believe in liberty, if you believe that every human being has some inalienable rights, that no government can take away or is going to grant are our rights. Among those, the life of liberty, of course, and life, and the pursuit of happiness. I didn't write this stuff. This is our founding fathers, the Declaration of Independence. That's why I came to America, for these things. If you believe in those things, you are brothers and sisters. I don't care where you're from. I don't care about your color. I don't care about your language or your accent. And that's it. God's winning. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Hopefully, I can bring you more news. Maybe better news. Maybe some Italian recipes. Maybe a song. Something. Meanwhile, stay vigilant. And don't give up. Don't give in. You've been listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna. Wake up. Wake up, America. Before it's too late They're trying to make you fade away They're trying to kill your faith Every day you're invaded Your soil desecrated Politicians turn their back You're under attack You're under attack your borders, the UN wants to give you orders, they're trying to sell you pride, it's time to